to Taiwan now, uh, hit by its biggest earthquake in 25 years. The government saying at least nine people have died and more than 800 were injured. This is where an offshore earthquake struck the east coast of the island. It was a magnitude 7.4 and the deaths all occurred in Walen County. That's a mountainous region near the epicenter. We can take you live there at the moment because search and rescue operations continue to be underway right in the middle of Walen. Uh, you can see here uh, emergency workers and rescue workers at the scene, heavy uh, lifting equipment there too because some buildings have come down. Uh, this is a remote, quite mountainous region of Taiwan and uh, there is damage that has been done to this area that will take weeks to repair, including some damage to infrastructure as well and to rail lines. Uh, but there were tremors felt right across Taiwan, even in Taipei. We've seen lots of videos that show buildings shaking violently. Uh, there have been aftershocks as well, about 100 of those. That's been really scary for people who live in Taiwan. Let's bring you the latest from there with Rupert Wingfield Hayes. This is the moment the quake struck a Taipei TV station in the middle of their morning news. The shaking was intense and prolonged. Buildings across the city swayed violently. Cupboards were emptied, furniture toppled. This construction site, this big building behind me here, under construction, a massive piece of either construction equipment or steel came off the top of this building this morning during the quake crashed into the building beside it and then down into this alleyway behind where you can see some workmen now. They've closed off that road. Remarkably, no one was injured. No one was on the street there at the time. No one in the Taiwanese capital has experienced anything like this in a quarter of a century. Many young people have never felt shaking on this scale. An earthquake hasn't happened in a long time, so it felt really terrifying. On the east coast in the city of Hualien, the shaking was much stronger and the damage much more severe. People on their way to work watched in fear and awe as a partially collapsed building was left leaning at a precarious angle across this intersection. Whenever our team moves, the building becomes unstable and they have to find something to hold on to to ensure their safety before pulling people out. But it is the landslides that have unleashed the greatest terror. The east coast of Taiwan is a rugged landscape of high mountains and deep valleys. The quake triggered hundreds of landslides that came roaring down into the valleys below. This is where most of the more than 700 injuries must have happened. People would have had little warning and nowhere to escape. Taiwan has done much to strengthen its buildings and infrastructure since another huge quake killed more than 2,000 people back in 1999. This time, few buildings have been brought down and the death toll is so far mercifully small. But there is little that can be done to stop a mountain from falling into the valley below. Rupert Wingfield Hayes, BBC News, in Taipei. So rescue efforts continue, including for dozens of people who are trapped in road tunnels after the quake struck. We can show you this image that shows the entrance to one of them. On the left, it's a picture taken last year, and on the right, this is what the tunnel looks like today. 60 people are believed to be trapped inside one of the tunnels, including four minibuses full of hotel staff. They appear right now to be unreachable by phone. So uh, late in the evening in Taiwan at the moment, they'll be hoping that there are a few aftershocks in the night, but those rescue efforts continue and we'll keep you up to date with those. Uh, Gregor Stewart Hunter is in Taipei and he told me about what it was like when the earthquake struck this morning. It was the feeling of being lifted up by someone and, and shaken. Uh, and then even once the initial shock had died down, the rest of the morning you, was spent with a series of aftershocks in very quick succession, uh, some as close as five minutes apart. And when I checked the news and realised that the epicentre of what had felt like a very powerful quake was actually in Hualia and I, 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 my jaw hit the floor, I thought, I, I, you know, I instantly knew that that was going to be a really, really big quake. And um, it, it seems that's been entirely uh, as it was. Um, the, the quake is huge, sorry. the biggest in 25 years, and we've got hundreds of people injured as well as hearing reports of many trapped 
not so many deaths yet, and let's hope that that figure doesn't go up. But what are you hearing in terms of reports of damage, particularly to infrastructure? Yeah, I think the infrastructure has been one of the most obvious ways that uh, the damage has, been, has shown up. Links into Hualien itself have been uh, damaged quite severely. Some of the railway network is, is down. Uh, some of the tunnels have collapsed, which means that actually physically getting in and out has become quite difficult, uh, unless you're going by air or by sea. Uh, but the damage extends beyond Hualien. In Taipei itself, there was suspension of the city subway services in the morning and the high-speed rail operator announced that there were going to be delays up and down the length of its line, which runs down the opposite coast of the island. So quite severe delays to, to infrastructure.